Hello there everyone and welcome to my latest Skyrim challenge build once again on Legendary Difficulty. As with my previous challenge builds, this character is only allowed to use the 6 skills it has naturally raised at the start of the game. If you're looking for any more information then make sure to check out the description for timestamps and more info. Make sure to give the video a like and subscribe if you're new around here too, so that you keep getting these builds in your sub feed. The merchant stumbled through the woods her robes catching on branches and her shoes coated in mud. The Khajiit was somewhere ahead of her, but the nimble thief was far more suited to the terrain than she was. She cursed the luck that had led them to this point. The townsfolk had been all but fooled by their scheme, gladly buying back their previously stolen goods. Why had one of them had to have noticed how similar the items were to the ones they had all recently lost? She had been able to calm them at first, using her magical talents and silver tongue to keep their fury at bay. The Khajiit had foolishly tried to use the distraction to pick a few pockets, being caught in the act when she attempted to steal from an old blind woman, who was far more perceptive than the cat had expected. Once weapons were drawn, the merchant knew they had to escape as quickly as they could. The thief had drawn her sword and prepared to fight, but against so many, the merchant knew it would be futile. Instead, she sprinted away at full speed, the Khajiit quickly following suit. They had been chased for days, and had to hide in a vast wooded area to lose their pursuers, but now a new challenge faced them. They were lost. They both were carrying around enough gold to buy an inn outright, but all the gold in the world was worthless if you starved to death. The thief had barely been able to catch them a rabbit, and they had mostly been getting by by eating berries, but this wouldn't sustain them forever. The merchant eventually caught up with the Khajiit. She was resting against a tree, clearly feeling weak after days with little to no food. The Breton tried to get her to keep moving, but her words felt hollow, despair evident in her voice. In the end, she gave up and took a seat next to her friend. The pair fell asleep shortly after, and the merchant awoke to the sound of voices in the distance. Waking up her companion, she eagerly headed towards the noises, soon spotting the light of a campfire and the smell of cooked rabbit drifting towards them. She couldn't clearly remember introducing herself to those around the campfire, her mind solely focused on the sight of succulent meat roasting over an open fire. She vaguely remembered offering a ludicrous amount of gold for a single bite, but those around the fire gladly offered up the food for free. Once their hunger was satiated, the pair started to pay more attention to those around them. A Nord and Altman were focused on the stories that the Argonian was recounting to them, while a young dark elf lay next to him, clearly in a deep slumber. The stories that were being told lacked the drama or excitement that the merchant tended to add, but they could easily be adapted to charm others in the future, and she made sure to remember some choice excerpts. With a sly look to her partner in crime, the Breton starts engaging the Argonian in conversation, ensuring the attention is focused solely on him as the Khajiit silently left her seat and crept around the camp, her light fingers searching through the knapsacks of those already seated. Although initially returning near empty-handed, things changed once a pair of soldiers appeared. The Breton made sure to get them involved in the conversation, and turn their attention to her, as the Khajiit rummaged through their gear. Once she was done, the Breton stopped talking, and the Wood Elf returned to the camp with a deer in tow. As the Imperial helped him with preparing the animal, she looked through the hall. The Khajiit had managed to drag over two full bags of mead and ale, several bottles dotted with blood. Casting a fearful glance at the seated orc, she noticed the large soldier searching around him for the items that were clearly missing. Before he was able to take any further action, the wood elf, clearly sensing the current mood, started telling jokes and singing songs. It being in her best interest for everyone to be happy, the Breton joins in, adding songs of her own that she had learnt from her travels, and soon the others begin adding their own songs too. Despite this, the orc had appeared to have noticed who had taken his alcohol, and eager to not end up with a blade in her back during the night, the merchant started handing out ale to all those at the camp. As the Red Guard approached, she made sure to position him between her and the Orc, as an additional precaution. After spending the night with the others, she tried to leave them behind in the morning, but as they all appeared to be heading north, it would have drawn more suspicion to change their route last minute. The Red Guard led the way, clearly knowing the lay of the land better than most of them, but the journey was a long one, and the rest of the group were moving far faster than she was leading to her falling behind. As soon as she became completely isolated, a trio of Falmer appeared. They already had the Khajiit held hostage, and the Breton was forced to come with them. She was knocked out by one of the elves, and woke up sometime later on a cart headed for Helgen. 
The skills for this build are Conjuration, Alteration, Illusion, Restoration, Speech and Alchemy. Conjuration starts at 25, and this proves incredibly helpful for this character, as it will allow us to easily cast Achnox right at the start of the game. You start with the Summon Familiar spell, and this will be your main way of dealing with enemies until you can get your hands on a more powerful version. In my previous builds, Alteration had been a difficult skill to use, but for this character it's far easier. Get yourself some flesh spells to help with leveling and to add some protection, and make sure to use candlelight when looting to ensure you don't miss out on any valuables. Illusion is one of the most important skills for this build. Calm spells will help us to deal with angered enemies who get too close to us, and the Courage spell will improve our companions, letting them fight harder and for longer. A particularly useful perk for this build is Hypnotic Gaze, which will let you calm higher level enemies. Use this skill to ensure your follower isn't being swarmed and can go toe to toe with whatever they're fighting. Restoration will also help with this. The Healing Hand spell will let us heal our follower and keep them in the fight. The only thing to keep in mind with this is that it can drain your magicka quite quickly, so keep an eye on it when using this spell, as you don't want to end up not being able to heal yourself if you need to. It may be worthwhile investing in this tree a fair bit, as reducing the cost of spells will obviously be helpful, but so too will the recovery and regeneration perks. The reason I'm not having to talk in as much depth about these other skills is that we have the speech skill, meaning we can buy and sell items. Any spell term we need can be bought, and skill training is a lot more dependable when we can make the money back quickly. If you want to make buying and selling even easier and more profitable for you, then head up the left side of the skill tree and get the Merchant Perk, which will let you sell any type of item to any merchant. The final skill of this build is Alchemy, and this ties into speech perfectly. It is so easy to become rich in Skyrim by selling crafted potions and poisons. I only invested into the Alchemist Perk, but I made sure to add an additional rank whenever it was available to me, in order to maximise the value of my potions. I'll make sure to leave some choice recipes in the description for particularly potent profit potions, but feel free to leave any of your own recipes in the comment section too so we can all end up filthy stinking rich. For this build I put all of my level ups into Magicka. As with my previous two builds it is critical that we have plenty of Magicka to use in combat, so make sure you have more than enough before even thinking about putting the points into anything else. The most helpful standing stones for this build will be the Thief Stone and Mage Stone. Whenever you're crafting potions or bartering for goods, you will want the Thief Stone equipped, and whenever in combat you'll want the Mage Stone, for the added experience to your other skills. Once you feel you have leveled enough with this build, I would then recommend switching to the Apprentice Stone, for the added Magicka regeneration. You shouldn't be the one taking damage, so the downside isn't so bad for this build. In addition, both the Tower Stone and Steed Stone have their uses with this build, be it getting to pesky locks, or carrying more loot to sell back at town. I personally didn't find myself using any powers with this build, as it's not a combat focused one. Feel free to leave suggestions in the comments for whatever powers you feel would suit this character the best. As with several of these builds, this character doesn't wield any weapons. However, as always, keep an eye open for staves and scrolls, as they will always come in helpful down the line. There isn't one specific item of clothing you have to wear as the main piece of apparel for this build. Instead use the most suitable robes you can purchase, along with any circlets with relevant enchantments, or an adept or expert hood. I was using conjuration robes, which I felt were the best choice for me, as I was summoning Atronarchs quite regularly, and they have a high magicka cost. The robes suit the look of a character surprisingly well, and I like to pretend that the pouch on the side of the robes is filled with all the gold or valuables that the merchant keeps with her. In addition to this you will also want to get your hands on an amulet of Xenophar. This will make prices 10% better, and should be an item you aim to get right out of the gate. A relatively easy one to get is just outside of Riften. When leaving Riften from the main gate, head down the path and then head right after going past the watchtowers and you should find a broken tower guarded by a frostbite spider. Draw the spider towards the guards, and then loot the area it was guarding for a free amulet of Xenophar. The only faction you really need to join with this build is the College of Winterhold. Joining the college gives you access to a fully stocked alchemy lab, your own quarters, and a host of merchant skill trainers. There is no better place in all of Skyrim for this character so I'd advise heading there in the early game and settling yourself in as soon as. 
In addition, you can join any other faction you feel fits in with the character. Don't go for anything that forces you to be outright aggressive or strong, but factions such as the Bard's College are a fairly logical choice to make. I use Stemdar as my main follower for this build, but any mercenary will do. I picked him over the others as he is skilled with heavy armour, so works as a good tank, and he has a greedy side, which I felt fit with the merchant nicely. You rely heavily on your follower to do the brunt of the fighting for you, so make sure you buy them the best weapons and armour you come across. It's all well and good being filthy rich, but all the gold in the world is worthless to you if you end up dead. In addition to a mercenary, you will want a pet follower too. I personally bought the War Dog Vigilance, but there are several other options. If you want to save some money, then you can go to Miko's Shack and pick him up for free. Alternatively, you can grab any of the various DLC pets, such as Reichlings or Armoured Trolls. This build is not designed to be a powerhouse in combat. Instead, it relies on being part of a team build, supporting your followers and getting them to do the fighting for you. You're a talker, not a fighter, so you shouldn't be directly involved in combat anyway. Try to get yourself a horse early on so that you can run away from combat when it initiates, but make sure to not be sprinting at all times or else your follower will fall behind and won't distract your attackers. The focus of this build should be on making money. I didn't spend that long on this build and I was easily at over 10,000 gold without any struggle whatsoever, and you will be able to make far more than that with no problem at all. Focus your attention on helping out alchemists for free ingredients, and going on alchemy runs to keep yourself stocked up at all times. If you want some tips on how to make some incredibly valuable potions, then check out my Skyrim No Kill series, or head over to Major Slack Attack, as he is the real master of the alchemy business model. I hope that all of you have enjoyed this video. Despite being a challenge build, I personally found it a more simple one to play, only slightly restricting what I could do, and letting me focus on the business side of Skyrim, which is easily one of my favourite parts of the game. If you too are a Skyrim business savant, then let me know with a like, or by leaving a comment. If you want more builds, then take a look through my channel, as there's currently a ludicrous amount of them here, so there's easily a build for everyone. Thank you all very much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you all in my next video.